I mean, it's a base file. I mean, it's still got to be some data logs ran through to make sure, get everything fine tuned, get things cleared up. But it's code free, still a race too. Just still need some data logging to do. Oh my god, dude, that's insane. What did we just go up to? 60, 70? stock charger to the 369 even hand calculating this thing's never right never right but even when you hand calculate it i would get close to the same miles per gallon on a race tune to stock charger 369 mm -hmm. driving straight line that's interstate highway back roads all like that i got to say about an mpg but when i got in town right who i got like probably i don't know four and a half mile a gallon <laughs> difference on that fixed van going through town because I was constantly, I wasn't... Like better or worse? No, worse. worse. Like I wasn't having that little bit of boost at that early RPM like yeah. a stock charger. But I don't know. I'll be curious with this setup. I mean, either way, I mean, this is a diesel truck that's in the upwards of the 730, 740 range. So, I mean, you can't expect freaking fuel mileage anyways. But exactly. It's just all about smiles. Exactly. Smiles per gallon. The turbo sounds so good. I personally like the way this sounds way better than your. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Thing. It's. Yeah. I love the turbo noise. I mean, I'm gonna miss the loud exhaust, but at the end of the day, it's a little bit on the obnoxious side. Oh yeah. Right? Just, I do miss that pop that the L5P gives. Oh, that's true. I do miss that. That will be missed. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little scared. Jacket and warmer, the the and warmer for the pocket. And warmer. Oh, we're staying warm. 10, 20, 21. <laughs> all year round. <laughs> you gotta reach around. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the battery life on one of those? On load, about eight hours. Eight I'm hours? Kill the battery though, today. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. So you have to charge your phone and your jacket at night, huh? Yeah, no. Actually, so you can what's the battery look like? It's the same ones that the walkie tools use. What? Yeah, I can actually charge my but phone. You, so you do have to walk around with that little thing in your back pocket. Yeah, but I can charge my phone and run my jacket at the same time. See that right there? Yeah. That's how it's still. See, it's dead though. Oh. <laughs> but it's still warm. Oh, Dang, you're, you forgot to charge your jacket. Check out the Uber. The truth behind owning a 750 horsepower Duramax, coolant leaks, <laughs> and makeshift funnel. Hold up. Let me help you out. You want me to hold the funnel or? 
Yeah, just keep the funnel right there, but it should be solid. So this is HSP? Yes, HSP. So I should be getting this from HSP as well. That is correct. Coolant light. Oh yeah, I mean it's literally like the the leaking of the coolant isn't even what's causing this right now. This is fat I did it add back after I had it burnt the second time. And the coolant leak I got is light, these smallest drip here and there, but it's not even all the time, it's weird. It's like, certain angles I hit where I don't know if that moves, moves around or what happens but it'll drip. You're talking about from the fitting up there, yeah, right? from the fitting up there, yeah. Which is a prone issue on GM for the people that don't know. And the people that do know, they know and they know the struggle. Right. Replace one every year. All right. So the plan for the day is to drive to Savannah, which is about two and a half hours from here, to meet up with the guy that bought Holden's old turbo. Basically, we're supposed to go to kind of help him out, but he's already gonna be done by the time we show up. So it'd be close to done. I mean, we'll start to help him do the actual turbo install itself. I mean, but what you do when you can't be here. <laughs> we're just gonna do some comparison and. Your actuator on one of the turbo is bad, so we're gonna replace that with his, and it should be running. All right, so this actuator came off the turbo from that truck, the stock turbo, I should say, from that truck. And then Holden's taken off the actuator off his modified stock turbo because there's something wrong with it. She took a crap on me. Yes, sir. I'm gonna go look at the donkeys. Hey, guys. I like those things. What, the light? Yeah, just for the simple fact, like even like, people that have been just helping me work on the truck, they are literally so bright actually working underneath the truck. Heck yeah. All right, quick update. Everything is the way it was before. <laughs> Didn't get to swap it out because you can get that actuator out of your turbo Dude, because of your Y bridge. So Y bridge gets pulled out tonight. That's gonna be fun. So a five, jo a five minute job turns into a five hour job. It wasn't that much, but it will be a, about a three hour job. Yeah. I'm gonna pull my AC compressor back out. Oof. Just for that stupid actuator right there. Just because it's- Gotta pull my actuator out, gotta pull my wide bridge, and then my feed line to get, the, uh, well, my crossover pipe for the mouthpiece going to the atmospheric turbo, cause I can't get to the bottom left bolt down there with that there. Yeah. Just because these studs were quarter of an inch too long or it's not even really the studs it's the Y bridge that you got with HSP -tool. this is like week five of at least yeah of this <laughs> compound setup because there were a lot of uh, things that need to be I guess adjusted and whatnot uh, what are some th issues that we run into that I forgot that Man, it's they, been a while. There were several issues. The first thing was the whole oil drain system that, that came with the kit, didn't really care for. So I got a new new drain line made up, got a fitting, redid it completely than what I guess the kit showed it was. And then I guess a few parts, cause I mean, it's still technically not like a kit that's pushed out in the public yet. Mm -hmm. So- You had to make adjustments. Given, yeah, it was given to us raw and it was, they're theoretically supposed to be sold out. The mm -hmm. We're sold out. There was I think nine or 10 of them that got sold. To, authorized dealers from that or a dealer for HSP and Performance was one of them and that's 
where this kit, I guess, technically came from. Trying to gather up all the little things because there was little things that I needed that didn't necessarily come with it that right. should have came with it. And I called HSP and they were willing to send me parts if I needed them, but I already got my hands on them. But apparently there was a mishap a lot. The three, the first three or four, I guess, I got sent out. There was a few parts that were missing. So you got the one of three. And I got the one of three or four that had the missing parts, but got them all on there got everything situated on the truck on the truck just didn't really drive right or feel right and to find out i checked my vein position on the scanner and on my edge and my vein position was stuck at 25 percent mm -hmm. so there was an issue there and i thought it was going to be the actuator was bad but we pulled everything back out of here pulled the wire bridge back out the mouthpiece back out the ac compressor back out to get that get the little actuator box out there to remove it because it sits too close to the wide bridge where you can't just unbolt it and pull it out exactly so got that out put another one in there that a buddy had given me and same thing <laughs> same thing did not work well then i was getting pretty frustrated and we all just kind of went inside for like an hour and calmed down and then figured out what we would do is i had my buddy go in there and push the throttle down and while he was pushing the throttle down we were watching the vein position mm -hmm. and he was up here manually actually turning the actuator arm to open up open and close the veins and we were going to see if it showed up differently or not because if it showed up differently then it was probably going to be a mechanical issue and it stayed the same so it told us it was an electrical issue that something wasn't wasn't getting sent to it so we pulled the fuse box pulled the lid on it and dude Everybody that owns a GM probably realizes how crappy the uh, layout design is on a fuse box. Mm -hmm. It's just a bunch of numbers, letters that makes absolutely zero sense. But we literally pulled out every single individual fuse one by one, checking Damn. it for blown fuses. And we found two blown fuses. And of course, it was the very last two that we got to. We put new ones in there and didn't fix the issue. It was getting real frustrating. And I even went back to my old pictures of my truck with a factory turbo, just tune and delete only, seeing how the actuator sensor and everything was plugged in man i was making sure i had the right wire plug because right. there's a bunch of harnesses that came off the wire bridge that i wasn't no longer using anymore and everything looked right checked on it and i got frustrated and i blew on it blew on it twice like a game boy stuck it back in there just like a game boy and that son of a gun as soon as i <laughs> as soon as i plugged it in i went to go open up my door and as soon as i opened up my door i heard the actuator arm kick off you're like, like son no, of a gun i'm like no way this is four o'clock in the morning yeah, and and, three days worth of uh, frustration. Yeah, well, I mean, it was a lot more than three days, but we started at like 8 o'clock that night trying to rip that thing out, put all the parts back in it, and then spent like three hours trying to figure out what the heck it was, like, what the heck else would it be, and figured out you just need yeah. a little love. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Two little blows. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of your future plans? Because I know the way it sits, it looks beautiful, but I know you're not satisfied there. Yeah, I mean, the way it sits, I mean, I would definitely want to get some actual, I guess, more appropriate for more high horsepower rated tires, I guess. not 420s oh, yeah. are nice for how it is, and there's, that's the best street setup. It'll still be my street setup right. driving around, but I would definitely like to get some drag radials, maybe some 17 by 10s Okay. Not sure yet on what option wheel and all like that I would go with. Tires, more likely would be Hoosers, but them or even Mickey Thompson's maybe. I, I've heard good stuff about them too, but tire wise that would be it and there's still a lot more to go on on the whole i guess the drive terrain is still more front end i want to do I, all i got is a kryptonite tie rods and i still want to get a center link and pretty much every what comes in their ultimate package other than right. tie rods because i have those but there's still a lot to a lot to do under here i mean right now i'm in the works of uh i guess patiently waiting on some parts but gonna try a new uh drop-in turbo yeah. Try in here, so it'll be an actual complete built unit, not just a slight little modified turbo like I got now, just a different compressor wheel. It'll be a, it'll be a whole new drop-in unit. But gonna test it, maybe test a bigger charger. But I really think at the end of the day, what I really want, like said and done, what done on my air is, I would love to do a S400, S400 setup. You're trying to get up to a thousand horsepower with your L5P Duramax, right? Reliable reliable a reliable yeah, thousand horsepower like a thousand horsepower like that's max tune like i would like to have it more limits going up above the thousand mark but be able to detune it back to low torque right they still keep that thousand horsepower mark i don't want to be on max tune set at that so i mean i want the most reliable and even if they got it jumping down a little bit between right. a little below a, th a thousand just you know as long as i know i got another tune file that's, mm -hmm. that's gonna make it there but want to keep her all together but 
definitely want to go bigger though on the uh, both airs on the Valley Charger and the atmosphere. The chopper is ruining the video. <laughs> so right now I use fuel additives for my trucks and that's just to make it you know more reliable but for performance side of things do you use any kind of fuel additives or any kind of additives yes i do i, I use actually three different ones i use <laughs> dang yeah i use the the uh hot shots oil uh stiction free eliminator i use that i, I don't want to say every oil change because stuff gets expensive but i use it at least every other oil change because i change mine a little bit more frequently than what the, i guess the average person would change their oil with right but i use that and then Whenever I go to the track or anything like that, I actually use our high octane booster from Hot Shots also. And then I'll also use, I guess, I can't remember exactly which bottle it's called, but it's more or less like a daily yeah. a daily fuel adder where you just add in just, just a little bit every fill up and I use that also. That's what I use. Yeah. It's just, I mean, I don't know if it's like necessary and all like that from what people say, but from my experience of it, the oil, I guess I can't really tell you. I mean, I'm not inside the motor to really tell exactly mm. what's going on, but... I know for the fuel additive at least, I can literally drive my truck with it, say a week without it. My truck doesn't smoke like crazy. I mean, it just puffs out a little bit of black smoke like mm -hmm. it normally does, but I can literally put that in there and actually gain a little bit of throttle response, but mm -hmm. not just that, like my smoke will be literally almost, I'll get these slightest little puff and it'll be 100% clean. There you go. And I mean, some people hate it, some people love it, and I, I've been using it since day one, since I did performance parts in my truck and it's still been going in it now. But it sounds way different to me because I got used to fixed vein. I got used to just a bunch of pop. It's a very slight turbo noise. So this is like so much whistle. <laughs> from what I'm used to. Oh yeah? Yeah. Did you ever drive my LOI when I had the big turbo? You did, yeah. right? Dude, that it truck's gonna so sound good. so good though with all the piping that I'm about to do. Oh yeah. That's the only issue with compounds is you lose so much like sound because it's more or less adding another muffler to the truck. Exactly. What's nice about this is no matter what mile an hour you're at, you don't get the slightest little first bit of drum. That's true. It is. This is like making my first eight hour drive in it, dude, it was the most pleasing drive. Yeah, like, better than your fixed vein. Yeah. Yeah, Garrett's like, damn, I don't get headaches no more riding with you. <laughs> you just get headaches? Yeah, Garrett, Garrett would get headaches. Damn. Not from the drone, but just like that fixed vein sound at like yeah. 70 miles an hour. Yeah. Garrett hated that shit. For this video keep on the lookout for future updates 2021 is gonna be pretty lit because i think we're gonna be going to a lot of races getting a lot of mods done a lot of road trips i think right probably yeah most likely yeah, yeah a lot of road trips i mean it looks great now but we got a lot we got some stuff uh in mind we got some companies to work with and we have some uh places to go and people to race so Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you guys want to see some Duramax racing content. And don't forget to follow Holden. This is the owner of the L5P Duramax. And there is Donnie, 
the owner of another tune that deleted L5P Duramax. A lot bigger one. I know, a lot bigger, and then uh, there's mine. Oh, yeah, the one on the left. Uh, the electric one? The, the electric one, the Prius. <laughs> that is it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you guys next time. Peace. Thank you.